Welcome to the third episode of my uh, Pi Game tutorial series. Today I'll be uh, working on the basics of a platformer, which includes showing towels and physics. It should be obvious, but my setup's a little bit different. Also, the video quality is higher, um, and that's because I just built a new computer. Unfortunately, I, my earbuds don't work as a microphone anymore, so I'm using a different mic. So I've actually got quite a bit of base code here, which I'm going to go over. First of all, I've got this map right here. This is just kind of well, the tile map I'm using. It's split up into basically the equivalent of a two-dimensional list for another language. There's a bunch of lists inside this big list, and in each list is a list of tiles. Each list itself is the difference of 1 in the y value. So this is like 0y, 1y... And then this would be 0x, 1x. But everything here is going to be multiplied by the size of the tiles themselves, which I actually drew beforehand. So I drew some dirt right here. And then I also drew some grass. And I also drew a player. I loaded these based on some stuff I mentioned in the last video. So these are just lo loading the two tiles. And then this one's actually a little bit new. I loaded it a bit differently. I converted it. And then um, I uh, used the dot second color key function which makes whatever part of the picture has the color right specified right here transparent when rendered in the game so even though this has a white background it won't show it when I blit it onto a surface I also set up some basic movement stuff and I also put that down here it's a little bit different than the last time. It's got all the information for moving, but it doesn't actually move anything yet. It's got like um, a movement variable that stores how much you're moving on the x coordinate and the y, and then this vertical momentum variable, and then I have a jumping thing right here which changes the vertical momentum to negative 5. And then I have this set to render at the rect location instead of having the player's own position which the rect is up here. And it's a 5 by 13, which is the resolution of the player's image. Yeah, I wrote a lot of code beforehand for this. I've also got some of the collision code, well, the collision code already written, which I'll go over. But um, the reason why I wrote it ahead of time was because I can't write it without making mistakes on my own. So first of all, I'm gonna go over this. This function right here takes a rect object, so the pygame.rect, um, object, and then a list of other rects. It goes through every rect in that list, and then returns whichever ones the first rect collided with. So, in this case, I'm, um, I'm using it for tiles. I'll be testing if the player is cl uh, colliding with any tiles, and then it'll return all the tiles it's colliding with. Physics is something a lot of people get stuck on here. Um, so the ideal way to do it and I, I found this to be the best way personally, there may be a better way, but I don't know, um, is you take take a rect, usually like the player or something, um, or basically whatever you're trying to move with physics, and then you take however much you want to move x and y, which is going to be this variable right here, you want to take all the things you're trying to collide with, which is a bunch of rects. Um, and then the way you do this is you move one axis at a time and test for collisions on that axis. So it moves along the x-axis based on what it has in this variable, and then tests for collisions, and then if it hits a tile while moving to the right, it'll set the right side of the rector that's moving to the left side of the object it collided with. If the movement is going left, it'll set the left side of the moving object to the right side of the object it collided with. And it does the same thing over again except with the y-axis, and it tests for collisions after it moves on the y-axis, and uh, adjusts for that by setting like, the bottom to the top, and then the top to the bottom. So it moves on the x-axis, and then on the y-axis. In theory, you could add a third axis, but we're not doing that. Um, and then one other thing that I did in here was the collision types, which is used to keep track of what side um, there was a collision on of the object that's moving. And then it just sets it to true for uh, whatever sides it collides on and then returns it at the end of the function. It also returns the state of the rect at the end of the function. A lot of this stuff is already written, so I'm going to implement it now. I've already got 
the player movement working and stuff. Actually, wait. I, I would like to implement the tiles first. So this is actually fairly simple. I just iterate through every layer of the game map. And then I iterate through every tile in the layer. And then I'm going to get some X and Y values here. And then I test the tile type because it's iterating through each one of these lists and then it iterates through each tile in the list and there's just a um, number well, as a string because I could just do something like air and stuff. It, it works better for if I want to add more tile types. Yeah, zero is air, two is grass, and one is dirt. So I can just ignore trying to draw something on the zero type, but on two and one I have to draw something. So if the tile is one, which is the dirt, I'm going to draw the dirt. And then I'm multiplying by 16 because that's the resolution of the dirt image. 16. I'm using 16 by 16 for all my tiles. And then if the tile is 2, I'm going to show the grass image instead. One thing I forgot to mention is that I'm splitting onto the display instead of the surface itself. The display is another surface I created. It's got half the dimensions of the actual screen itself. The screen is 600 by 400 and then the display is 300 by 200. The display is its own surface and I'm uh, rendering all my images onto that and then what I'm doing at the end is I'm uh, blitting the display that I'm blitting onto onto the screen or what's actually being shown and then updating it. But instead of just doing it normally I'm actually scaling it using pygame.transform.scale this variable right here is the size it's supposed to be scaled to, and this is the uh, surface that I'm um, scaling. And then this function here, right here just returns the scaled surface, which is what is used in the screen.blit function to render the uh, surface I'm actually putting everything onto onto the window itself. And then I gave it the coordinate 0, 0, so it's done on the top left. What this does is it allows, like, it, it um, scales everything up, everything's twice as big, and it works better for pixel art, which I do in a lot of my games. So this should be working now, but the chances are I messed something up. Actually, I didn't. So you can see there's tiles and stuff. There's grass, and then there's dirt, and then I've, I put this floating platform up here. It's useful for testing physics later. So these functions, like you can look in the description and then I'll have all the code so you can take these functions. These are very general, you can use it for a lot of situations. So you might want to use it for your own use. So now I'm going to implement those functions. So it should be layer rect and the collisions equal move player rect because that's what I'm moving then the player movement because it contains the information of um, how far I'm moving in each axis so this is the x-axis and then this is the y-axis and you can see right here that I'm moving on the x-axis for if the moving right variable is true or um, if the moving left variable is true which is handled down here in the controls and then I also have a, a vertical momentum thing uh, going on here, which is basically gravity, and then um, pressing the up arrow key jumps by setting that vertical momentum to negative 5, so I'm suddenly moving up a bunch, like the momentum is pushing me up. And then that just gets set into the player movement variable, which on the y-axis so that it's going negative 5 on that, and then it'll slowly get decreased and then I'll start moving down, uh, because this is always um, going up until it hits 3, which is its cap. And then this part is going to be the tile rects, like all of the um, Pygame rects for the tiles, which I haven't made yet, so I'm going to add that right here. So the tile rects is going to be an empty list. If the tile is not air, which is uh, the string of 0, then I'm going to add um, a rect for the tile being handled into the rects list. Um, okay, so that should do it. Although then again, I might have messed it up. 
I don't know. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's actually working. Um, yeah, you can see there's like full on physics right here. I can jump around. And then uh, let's. Yeah, I can't. There's no like teleporting around because the movement is glitchy or anything. It's all working perfectly fine. And I'm not really having any problems or anything. So now there's one more problem here is that we can just jump in the air. And this is where that part I added in before is useful. This thing right here. Um, it keeps track of where the collisions were. So there's this variable rate, well, this um, a key in the dictionary for collisions for the bottom collision, which I can be used to see when there's a collision on the bottom. Thing is, is that there's not always going to be a collision below me when I'm on the ground because I'm not always moving down. Because when you round this number after setting it to zero, um, actually it's not set to zero, but if you were to round it, it would be zero sometimes. So I would technically be in the air when it comes to just checking if there's a collision. And then because it's plus 0 0.2, it'll take five frames for it to reach one. And then once it's one, that's when it's going to push me down. And then I'm going to have a collision with the ground. So what I need here is an air timer um, to see how long I've been in the air. And this just means how long it's been since the last ground collision. And it's going to set that to zero. Since I already discussed that it takes five frames for the vertical momentum to be one, well, to basically make the player move down, I'm going to check for the bottom collision. And then if it's true, I'm going to set the air timer to zero. And then otherwise the air timer is going to be added to. But yeah, like I said, since it takes five frames for the player to get moved down, um, I'm going to make it the, so that you have to be below six frames on your air timer um, in order to jump. Because this is the code right here that activates the jump itself. So if air timer is less than six, it'll do the jump. So now I should only be able to jump from on the ground. And then I'm just pressing up a lot, and then I can only jump while I'm on the ground. One thing though is that if you look here, it doesn't like I'm dropping very fast when I um, walk like this, and that's because the vertical momentum is not being reset when I touch the ground. Um, so right here I'm going to put vertical momentum equals zero. And this is the thing that's going to cause me to technically float for a short amount of time, which is why this is necessary instead of just checking if there's a collision on the bottom. But it gives more realistic physics when walking off of a higher ground. See, look, I kind of drop a bit slower now instead of just dropping instantly like I did before. So that's pretty much the basics of how physics and platformers work and then also the tile system itself. There's um, another tile system I'll probably be using in the future that's based on dictionaries and uh, keys. It works better for a changing, I, I guess, world size. It's hard to explain, but it has uh, specific uses that it works better in. Anyway, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you'll check out the next one.